welcome back to our YouTube channel. Now Carlos is supposed to sing a song because that's what you do every time you light a candle. Well, yeah. But, but we are as always <laughs> your host, Sonia <laughs> Carlos. And I'm not going to be singing a song. No. However, uh, we are now entering uh, Christmas uh, 2019 mode. Yeah. And we start with the uh, first of Advent. Uh, last year we had uh, Santa's workshop here. This year it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit more minimalistic, I think. Uh, we're not Santa's little elves this year. But we do have a lot of great uh, videos coming up uh, into the holiday season. Uh, today it's all about gloves and Christmas gloves or cr Christmas motif kind of gloves. We're starting with this tutorial today because if you want to knit these as Christmas gifts, you still have plenty of time before Christmas. Uh, and then in the next few weeks, we're going to be doing everybody's uh, favorite uh, cooking episodes. Uh, there's going to be some traditional Swedish uh, buns and we are doing uh, some um, things, vegeta vegetarian <laughs> things for some Christmas, things for I Christmas. suppose. <laughs> and then there will be a sum up of uh, the year uh, in the 4th of Advent. Yes. But anyway, we're here on 1st of Advent and uh, looking very much forward to spending the uh, preparation season uh, with you guys. Uh, remember to stress down. Uh, Christmas is supposed to be enjoyable. Uh, don't get in your head. Uh, no, really, I mean, a lot of people get very stressed uh, for Christmas, with, you know, because they, they want everything to be perfect. And sometimes you just, you can't help it. Things don't go the way you're supposed to go. And it's okay. I mean, even... Here in this household, there is a lot of issues with things that don't really turn out the way they should. So just chill out, chill out. and relax. And knit some mittens as a mm. gift or something. This is a perfect Christmas gift. Uh, and these are very, very cute. They've got a uh, little hearts. Christmas hearts. So we made these mittens with hearts. There's like, you know, like one, the one you hang on the tree and you put sweets in them. So there's like yeah. two hearts. That's a very Danish thing. They do a lot of, uh, in, Dan in Denmark, they do a lot of Christmas uh, decorations in paper. And they fold to these really nice mm. heart-shaped uh, baskets, baskets to put sweets in the, inside. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the motif of our gloves. This is the small size, <clears throat> so it's a little bit small for us. And you have the hearts, and then on the inside you have stripes. And there's, we have made a video on how to make these stripes look good. So there's the link, link in profile. Mm -hmm. I suppose the link is uh, somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so we will, we, yeah. uh. so we, we show you how, how you can make stripes looking like stripes. So you don't lose like stitches. To get smaller and bigger. Yeah. And on, today we will show you how we increase on the gusset, where we increase in the mother stitch mm -hmm. and the grandmother stitch. So we will knit through the, the decreasing mm. on the thumb. We also made the pattern in two sizes, and we all, uh, like we said, but we also made it so you have the right hand and the left hand. Mm, because a lot, a lot of people find it difficult because normally on the patterns, in like mitten patterns, there is just one pattern and then it said you should just knit this piece reflect it or mirror, yeah. mirror. mirrored. But a lot of people find that really hard. So, so we made a the, the mirroring. <laughs> so you don't have to think, just knit. That's cool. And I think that you have an idea today that we're doing this podcast style, yeah. aren't we? we so it I, means that in a little while, you're not going to see us anymore. It's just going to be a pair of hands working the thumb. You're going to be able to see exactly how to do a thumb uh, in color work yeah. for a mitten. And the pattern itself, for those wondering, this pattern is available uh, on our shop. So you just need to go to arnacarlos.com, uh, select shop from the menu, and you can uh, purchase the pattern there if you want to have it. Mm -hmm. And remember, you can check the link where you can see how we make stripes, because it's very important yeah. that the stripes, the side with the pattern and the side with the stripe, stripes has the big, the same, the vo same vol volume. volume yeah. Because normally, if you struggle with stripes, you get you get a mitten that looks like this, because when you put it flat, it goes in. Yeah, you don't want to have that. So the stripes that's supposed to be on the side will be more under because you pull too much when you do stripes. Mm. 
but we have a video. Good. But now we're going to do the gossip. Yeah, and you're going to not gossip. see us again for this episode, <laughs> uh, but you're going to be listening to a lot of uh, interesting information about uh, knitting and color work uh, and doing thumbs. Are you, so, you sure we're going to talk about that? We can talk about anything. We can talk about anything, but we'll see. But it's a tutorial, so we're going to end up talking about something that is related to this stuff. So anyway, we're now going to disappear and uh, enjoy this podcast. So let's start and knit our Christmas mitten. And as we knit the mitten, maybe we can talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the Christmas uh, baskets that are on the mitten, because they're actually hearts, but they are usually made in paper and they are hung in the Christmas tree. And you could put candy in them. Yeah. Did you make those as a kid? I did. We did them in school and we did them at home. And this is like something we made in different colors and you cut the paper and you weave it. And so you weave, the, yeah, you cut strips of paper and weave it into hearts. Yeah. And they're double, just as you see on the, on the, on the screen, they're double. Uh, and so two hearts shape and, and with the handle on top shape shape it into a little basket and then you put candy in it yeah, so and you can hang them on your Christmas tree mm -hmm. but you could also put them hang them on the windows yeah you can put them yeah we have or if you want to decorate yeah. your house and I, I believe we have a fancier version of them in our in our uh, stash of Christmas decorations don't we we have like some that is crocheted. Uh, well, I wasn't we thinking the those as a gift from someone. Yeah, I remember. but I wasn't thinking of those. Aren't I think oh, a little think bit about more the gold. Golden ones. Yes. Oh, we have some really fancy one in gold. They're from, really nice. Yeah, from Georg Jensen. Yeah, we use them with the knitted Christmas balls. I mean, they're not in real. They're not in actual real gold. They are in some sort of a gold, uh, thick material, paper-like yeah. material. It's just the color is gold. The color is gold, yeah. So they're not so that if fancy. If anybody asks, we say, oh, they're in gold. Yeah, but they're not that fancy. <laughs> no. But not they're really really. nice and they're, they are, uh, I, I would say, a very Scandinavian uh, thing, right? Yeah. I think, I think the is. Danes would probably want to say they are very Danish because usually they're white and and uh, red but they can also be in so many other mm -hmm. colors so i think I that think we bought some in denmark once in tivoli yeah remember in the christmas shop yeah, in yeah. tivoli and they were in red and white but yeah. they were like there was no space in them they were just small but you can i mean you could say they're scandinavian uh, but denmark does have a lot of traditions with paper cutting huh yeah. they do a lot of uh, paper cutting figurines snowflakes things like that they have an incredible uh, tradition with that for christmas and we've met a really good uh, paper cutter. Um, yeah, she is. Uh, an artist good. called Karen Bittweiler. She is incredible. She lives in Norway. Yeah. She's Danish, uh, but she lives in Norway. And what she does in paper, with the paper and scissors, is it's amazing. Art. It's, it's pure art. so beautiful. So if you want to Google her, her name is Karen. Uh, so Karen. Bit, I think it is, B-I-T. I think it is, yeah. And then Veile, V-E-J-L-E. Her work is phenomenal. And she's, she gave us a little Christmas tree that she'd cut, which is incredible because it's cut in paper and then it folds out. So you yeah. can fold it in and flatten it, or you can just fold it out and then it goes on the table. It's a very nice it's really Christmas cool. decoration. So yeah. we thought that like this for this year's Christmas mittens, we should use hearts because yeah. that's very Christmassy. And now let's talk about the inside as well. Because I am, I, you know... Um, by now, people will probably know, because we say it often, I guess, that the traditional Nor Norwegian mitten will have a large design on the top of the hand. Uh, in this case, there's two hearts, right? Mm -hmm. The more common design is the silver rose, which, uh, which we love. Usually, there'll be two large silver roses, a traditional Norwegian rose motif on the top of the hand. And then on the palm of the hand, usually they will be a a smaller motif that is uh, you know in smaller so too large on the on the palm on the top of the hand and smaller motifs on the inside of the hands I, I think we have fulfilled this today yeah in this mitten even if this is more of a modern interpretation the stripes you could say they are a kind of a smaller motif couldn't you yeah and i also think like the stripes could also be like an exercise if you want to practice your color work because stripes is actually some of the most hardest thing to knit because a lot of people they lose tension totally yeah. when they do it so that's yeah, yeah 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 we've heard we've heard about that you know yeah. the 
the people that are designing and then they make it on purpose so that um, on one, you know, they would do it in a way that on one hand, the, the, the gray would be more uh, visible and then on the other hand, the blue would be more visible. But um, that's not really a design element. It's more an issue with tension. They should all be the more same size, the same more as, or less. As, as the, at least that's what you, every knitter try to achieve is uh, in Norway anyway even we... tension mm. so and and on, and for this uh, podcast that we were talking, thought we should just make the the gusset on the tongue and place the scrap yarns so then you can watch us when we do color work where we do one color mm. or one stitch in each color and you can also if you want to take a closer look at how we increase and stuff. And I think you can slow down the video if you think it's too quick. But this time, actually, we're not thinking about how quick it is or slow it is, because this is not a tutorial. No, absolutely not. Now, um, let's go back to the to the uh, stripes, Arne. If, they, uh, if the knitter has problem achieving equally equal stitches in the blue and the gray, there will probably be some issues with the sizing of the be. stripes no, no, or of the mitten. Well, may maybe not for the stripes, but if you do the same on the front, you will have a problem. Okay, yeah. Because the stripes will always be the same amount of stitches, but if you go to the front and you make, like if you did the red that you see on the women mittens, uh, if you have a big, all the red stitches are huge. Mm then it would be bigger because there are fewer white stitches. So if you switch it and you have bigger white stitches, then all the red stitches will be tiny and then it will be smaller. Okay, so uh, a word of advice to everybody. Try to achieve even tension, uh, keep good control of your, um, of your yarns and try to make the stitches more or less the same size. Now, mm -hmm. it's not rocket science and you can't really get the stitches to be perfectly even because it is a hand knit project but as even as you possibly can um, you don't want one or the other color to pull in yeah. and now i know that we are on december 2nd today so we are on first of advent which is a really nice time here we'll talk a little bit about christmas preparations a little bit later in our yeah. podcast but i think i oh you want to say something yeah because first i would also want to say like if you look at the red mittens that i made you see some of the gray stitches are a little bit smaller some in some places and that is not because of the way I held the yarn, it's because I pulled the yarn too much when I placed it on the needle. Mm -hmm. But that I can fix when I, when I steam the mittens. Okay, good, good. So I just pull the mitten and then normally the stitches will pop out again and they will fall in place. Okay, that's a good so thing to say. It, it's, it will look even better when you finish it. Okay, cool. So let me go back to okay. what I was going to say. So it's second and advent. This is a great time uh, to start preparing for Christmas. I know that people um, have wanted us to do our Christmas projects uh, earlier so they have time to achieve them. But we really wanted to do a podcast uh, now. We haven't done a podcast in a long, long time. And of course, the, the pattern for this mitten in both the men's and the women's size will be available on our web shop. Sorry, web shop. From now on, you can go to arnacarlos.com, select shop from the menu, and you can purchase this pattern. And I know that some people are going to be a little bit like, oh, but we won't have time to make it for Christmas. And then all I want to say is don't worry about it. This is not necessarily a Christmas, Christmas C design. This is a pair of hearts in a mitten. So this can be... This can be a lover's gift, right? It can be a Valentine's gift. You can knit a pair for you and a pair for your boyfriend. Or if you're a male knitter, you can knit a pair for yourself and a pair for your girlfriend. You can give them in Valentine's in mm. February. So you have plenty of time. Don't stress about this. Uh, but we do want you to enjoy this pattern. Um, so you'll get it on our web shop if you're interested. Yeah. You can make them any time of the year yeah. and you can use them any time of the year and you can pick other colors and then they, maybe they fit another season. Yeah, and we cro cross our fingers that if you do give them away as boyfriend slash girlfriend mittens that you don't break up with your partner afterwards. We've heard that there is a curse, but that's actually for sweaters. Swe they say you should never knit a sweater for your boy 
that was like boyfriend or girlfriend. I think it was mostly said when most of the girls were knitting and not so many men were mm. knitting. So it was the, always the girl should make a sweater for her boyfriend because then she will lo- lose the boyfriend. Yeah. And we met a lot of people who actually tell us that they made their new boyfriend a sweater. And whoops, <laughs> he was gone. Yeah, but luckily the mitten is not such a big job. So it is uh, def- therefore not going to happen. Don't worry about it. Let's all knock on wood. Uh, and hope that <laughs> that it doesn't happen. And Christmas is coming every year. So if you're not using the mittens this Christmas, you can use them next Christmas. Yeah, but you know what? If you knit them in these co- kind of colors, they are maybe for Scandinavian eyes a little, you know, the gray and, and red can can be a little bit Christmassy. But if you're in the US, maybe you would want to do them in in red and green, and if you do them in the red and gray, then they're not Christmassy. Don't think of this as a Christmas season thing. This can be used all winter, in but my opinion. But you know, like in, Nor- in Norway, a lot of gray and red together is, is necessarily not Christmassy. It c- you can use that every Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what year. I mean. I mean, this is not a Christmas... Yeah. It can be a Christmas gift, yes, but it's not a Christmas mitten in the sense that you can only wear it in the holiday season. You can wear this all year, all winter long. I wouldn't say all year round. Well, sometimes in Norway, I do wish I had my mittens out <laughs> in the middle of summer the middle when of you summer. wake up and there and it's like uh, zero degrees outside. But anyway, uh, it's a lovely project um, to do and for yourself or for whoever you want to do it, and uh, just enjoy it. And you can do any colors actually because you know this alpaca soft dk has so many nice colors yeah so use your imagination Mm -hmm. so christmas time is coming uh we um started doing actually our first video that we ever did was in december of 2015 this means that uh now we are getting close to celebrating uh five four years sorry four four years 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 on youtube YouTube. so that is a milestone i would say and not only four years but we have posted an episode every single sunday for four years although nowadays we do a few reruns in the summer yeah because we we need like holidays a few weeks holiday to get away from youtube sometimes yeah and then some people are upset because they've seen it before but anyway, but anyway, we have to have holidays too. So please, uh, please <laughs> let us have some holidays. Uh, well, actually, we don't ask anybody. Yeah, and if this people me- don't like it. We don't answer. And this means it's four years since we launched the channel, and uh, four years since we started our partnership. You know, I mean, you usually see us not today, but on an, on a regular basis, you'll see Arne and myself in front of the camera. But we have a few more people, and I like to acknowledge them. So we've yeah. got. Anna Karlsdotter, who is the, uh, let's call her the, uh, she's the engine of this channel. She's the one that um, helps us with all the episodes. You know, she's there to direct us and help us when we need direction. She is doing a lot of the background stuff, uh, posting uh, the episodes on, on YouTube. She prepares everything. She's, she's, she's really like the, the, yeah, I'd say the engine of the channel. And then you've got Eric, who is the... Eric uh, Lundby, who is the uh, uh, videographer uh, yeah. and editor. And, and he's becoming a good knitter now. And he is. <laughs> this is funny because he's a professional. I mean, um, all of our partners are professionals. They come from the TV world, in case you were wondering. And Eric is a, a great scene, uh, video vi- videographer. Um, and the thing with him is that uh, following us for four years now, he's an expert editor in knitting. He knows everything there is to know about knitting, even though he's never knitted anything he's <laughs> attempted to knit we've tried to teach him a little bit of knitting um and he is uh, he's not a good knitter but he is a great knitter when it comes to the, the process okay. he knows this everything this message is for you eric you're a good knitter. you're a good knitter <laughs> at least in theory <laughs> <laughs> and I then it on picture <laughs> yeah and then finally we want to also give a little shout out to per Jürgen, who we call pj and pj is actually the the one that initiated this whole thing. Without PJ, we wouldn't have done the, the, the YouTube channel. He really wanted to, to do this. He works, uh, he used to work for a big uh, TV production company and um, he had a feeling that this YouTube uh, thing would become big and it is becoming pretty big for us. I have to say we are uh, growing and growing and growing and it's amazing. So PJ gets a shout out for being the, 
the brains behind this all. So we've got the brains, we've got the <laughs> engine, we've got the videographer, and then of course Arna and I, who are in front of the camera. But we're not only decoration, Arna, Arna are we? No. We are creating the content. Yeah. So uh, it's, well. a, it's a great collaboration, and I'm very happy that we are all working together this way. Um, and we'll be having Christmas lunch uh, in a few weeks. Uh, it'll be nice That'd to catch up nice. with all of them. We haven't seen them for a while. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So, Arne, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm doing parallel stripes now, and I'm, I have started to increase for the thumb. Yes, that's good. So, if you look closely, you can see how I do it. Yeah, and parallel stripes, that means you're knitting with one color and throwing with one color. Yeah. So, alternating one color knitting and one color throwing. And this is an easy, good way to, do, to achieve even tension, because you're controlling both of your... Um, both of your yarns while you're knitting. It's yeah. looking really, really, really good. Um, and I can't wait to see the result. Thank you. Yeah, so it's, yeah, so it's really great, Arne, to see the, the, the mitten like that. Yeah, and people might wonder, is it Eric who is filming now? But no, he's not. Let's give you a little behind the scenes. I think that's appropriate since we've been shouting out to to all our, our team members uh, as we celebrate uh, four years of Arne and Carlos. Um, so uh, this is how it works. We meet, uh, nowadays we meet uh, about four, maybe five times a year mm -hmm. on weekends. Uh, they all come and stay with us in our home. And we record usually about 16 episodes per weekend. So we start on Friday evening and we have the whole, whole Whole of no, how you say yes, that? whole of Saturday. Whole of Saturday and most of Sunday. And most of Sunday. And usually in the in Friday <coughs> evening we do record a few episodes as well. There's always a live stream nowadays, so so whenever there's a live stream, you know that the team and Arna and I are recording episodes. So we do about sixteen mm. episodes in a weekend, which means that Arna and I have a lot of preparation work to do in advance. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes we get comments on YouTube like. Like, sometimes people ask if you are sick, sometimes they ask if I am sick, but that's because we've made so many videos in a day. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. At yeah, the yeah, end yeah. of the day, we look a little bit like... Well, for like example, like, groggy. <laughs> for example, we meet, we meet on the Friday, and then, you know, usually the first evening when we meet, there might be a little wine involved, and then we in the morning... Have, like, a dinner, <laughs> and... Yeah. yeah, and then in the morning, we wake up and, and start filming, and then we are pretty... Pretty hard working, you know, like we will do on Saturdays, the most efficient day, including the live stream. We can do up to eight or even 10 episodes in, in that day. And then Sunday will be like uh, six episodes or, or yeah. eight episodes. And yeah, by the time we're filming the last episode on Sunday and we're falling asleep. Yeah, sometimes people. So if you th don't think we look healthy, it's because we made a lot of movies that day. Yeah. On the other hand, I think that that is a little bit of a. A strange comment to receive. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. What if you were very sick? Well, or the opposite. Or the well, op you know, you could just be tired because we've done mm -hmm. fifteen episodes. So it's not really a question I feel is appropriate to ask uh, in a comment field. Uh, I don't think anywhere. I would have told anybody if I, if I really was sick. I wouldn't tell that on YouTube. No. Anyway, you? it, it's usually no, because okay. anyway, it's usually because we're tired, not because we are sick. Um, and then, of course, we had that thing. I, I, I mentioned it a couple of times before. I was really sick in January. I had the flu and I was out for three weeks. And then we had a recording of episodes in, um, in February, just after I had recovered from the flu, where I was weak. Um, I had lost a lot of weight because I wasn't eating very well for during the flu period. And of course, yeah, then I wasn't, you know, up to 100%. But if we look a little bit tired it's probably because we're just that we're tired that is a lot of work because when you do a video you have to prepare mm -hmm. so you always have to do something oh yeah 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 like you can't just start without preparing so that takes a few weeks actually to or maybe a month mm. sometimes more oh yeah 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 because if you do like if we do like now when we do these mittens we had to make one pair first and it takes time mm -hmm. so and now that we're doing the podcast, uh, we can reveal uh, a little bit behind the scenes. The we, won't, we won't reveal everything because we don't want to take the magic away no, from it. No, don't take the magic. But we can, re so, we can reveal the following. So the intro was recorded uh, when we were doing our 
our videos uh, together with Eric and Anna and PJ. So this intro was recorded a long time ago. And then when we have time, we sit down and we record the podcast on our own. So this is done at home, um, usually with our cell phones. Um, so it's a little bit, um, how would I say, a little bit less professional, I would say, or maybe it's a lot less professional. So it's this is recorded. Le- less professional, but you know when you have the iPhone and the selfie stick, that's all you need. Yeah, it, it basically is. So and it's, it's, I think it's okay when we do these films, like when we just you can just see us do something. I wouldn't put the iPhone up in my face and no. do a whole video. That is not so nice. Mm. I remember the first two podcasts that we recorded, they were the embroidery podcasts. Those were actually recorded live. They were done, well, not live, but they were recorded in one go uh, by Eric. Actually, it wasn't Eric because Eric was ill that, that time. Yeah, there was a... So it was his assistant, yeah. uh, Peter, I think it was, yeah. Peter, who recorded it uh, live. But after that, we decided that we could do the, the podcasts on our own. So they're done um, on their own. Uh, we are in an undisclosed location somewhere in the world. Who knows where it is? I mean, we don't <laughs> want to take the magic away. No, but you can imagine how boring it would be if we, if Eric had to stand over us with a camera or put the camera. Yeah, for like an and hour. And just wait. So this it's better for us to do this podcast when we're, uh, we're at home and we can do it when we have time. Yeah. So and anyway, was that the magic? Or yeah. Did we re- reveal too much? Time? No, I don't. I think that it's okay. Yeah. Now people know a little bit more about our team members and how fun it is to do this work, and also how tiresome it can get because it does get pretty tiresome when we do the intense, um, you know, the intense periods of, of of recording, which is four to five times a year, sixteen episodes each time, and then we have the question that we get because we go on tour. Um, usually in the fall um, and by the time you listen to this we may actually be on tour and usually the question that we get while we're out traveling is will there be an episode next week because you're here yeah. or, or sometimes we get the question wow you're here and yet we've just seen an episode yesterday where you were doing something like <laughs> updating, the, or... updating the, <laughs> the dollhouse or doing a Q&A in your greenhouse how does that happen? How, well, it's magical. And yeah, and it's because we re- pre-record um, many episodes in advance. So by now, I think, uh, if I recall correctly, um, Anna should know this because she's the engine. But anyway, or the, yeah, she, she would probably tell me how many episodes we have uh, and how many months ahead are we. But I think it's something like February. Yeah. Not sure, but I'm going to ask Anna. I think we have episodes to last us until until February. There's one episode, though, that we're going to be recording, um, not quite live, but we're going to be recording it just before it airs, and that is the podcast that we're going to be doing for Advent, for the 4th of Advent. Uh, that's not going to be a podcast with hands. We're going to be recording it at Eric's place, uh, and we'll be knitting something, maybe a Christmas ball or something like that. And then we'll talk about the year uh, that has passed uh, and kind of look back at all the months and all the things that we've done this year. And that one will be recorded on uh, December 17th, and then it will be aired um, on the last Saturday, or sorry, the last Sunday before, before Christmas. Yeah. So we look forward to that. That's actually the only... The only episode that we are recording um, and then airing it a week after. So by the time you s- like, if you see this on the Sunday, we pr- are probably still touring, but you can still see the video. Yeah. Because we are maybe we are somewhere in the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in the U.S. for sure, uh, or Canada. I don't remember where we'll be on December second. Oh, actually, I think we're going to be in Canada. We're somewhere in the world. Or, no, no, no. We're either in the U.S. or Canada, because that's where our tour is this year. Um, yeah, and we'll talk more about the tour. It's a very long one. We start on, we start. We'll start on December twenty. Sorry, September twenty fourth, and it will go on until December 9th. So it's so it's a very long tour this year. But we'll talk more about this during our yearly podcast. I think yeah. so. We'll leave that for another day. Instead, let's, uh, let's talk about Christmas and Christmassy things. Um, I'm sure Arne, 
you are very excited now because I am. although this year wait, 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 this year there is going to be a little bit of an issue because when we air this episode which has been pre-recorded we will not have yet decorated for christmas but and this still, year for us it's still early it we is don't do much this early but this year we're not going to start our christmas preparations until december 10th or probably December 11th, because we're going to be jet-lagged on December 10th. So how is that going to go? I don't know. But I guess, like, <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is we have to start to dig the houses out of the snow. So we will have a lot of exercise the first Well, that depends days. on how much snow it is. Who knows? Oh, it looks like... I've seen on, on the internet, it looks like we have a lot of snow. So we will be digging snow for a while. And then I think... We will start, maybe we should do some new Christmas cakes or mm. something. Well, I need, to, I need to interrupt you there when you say Christmas cakes, because <laughs> we need to toot our own horn and let everybody know that uh, this Advent uh, is fun uh, on YouTube because we're doing two of the things people love the most. We're doing two podcasts. Yeah. So there's a podcast on today, you know, today, uh, first of Advent. And then there's a podcast on 4th of Advent, which will be our yearly podcast where we go through the year. So you've got two of those to look forward to. I'm sure you're enjoying this one. Now, a lot of people do tell us that it, podcasts are their favorite things uh, in our channel. And then, Arne, we have two cooking episodes. Yeah, but no cakes. No, buns. This no, year we we're doing buns. buns. We have buns. Yeah, well, no, a bun is cake. not a cake, I guess. Yeah. But it still involves baking. Yeah. Uh, and the baking episode will air next week, and I think people will be entertained. Yeah. Without saying too much, but you know, baking is rocket science. <laughs> it is. And That's why I'm not doing it. And with baking, you need to have the ingredients, and you need to have the measurements. And I was thinking that Americans would need the measurements in their system but it turns out an american baker told us that no baking should be done in metric because mm -hmm. it's more precise because it is rocket science what about england is england england would have pounds and, pounds. and and stuff like that but but an american baker told me that in order to achieve the best results in baking because it is a precise science you need to go metric mm -hmm. because metric is way more precise than the imperial system, which is used in England and, and in the U.S. So there you go. Um, I usually say in, my, in, in, our, in our cooking shows that you can convert to pounds and everything online. But for next week's episode, you need to go metric. I didn't know this when we recorded the, the baking episode, but apparently it is the way to do it if you are precise. And this is told, taught to me by a professional American baker who lives in the USA. So there you go. Um, anyway, it is uh, going to be an exciting episode because uh, there will be two questions. I, I, you know, will we succeed in following the recipe to the letter? That's the question number one. And I'm not so sure because we're creative people. Question number two is how is our oven doing? Will it screw up our recipe? Will we burn everything? Will the buns go, come out dry? Will they not rise? I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong, aren't it? Mm. So um, it'll be exciting to see the results next week. But you're not, you're not that bad at cooking. I think you're good. You're a good cook. Well, I acknowledge you that see? I am, Arne, I acknowledge that I am a good cook. Yes, I know <laughs> that I know how to cook. I know how to cook tasty food. Yes, but baking is different. Because I have never really been a good baker. I remember distinctly making you a pavlova. Uh, I got the recipe... That was not good. Well, yeah. I got the recipe from our <laughs> sister-in-law. And the recipe was to do this meringue. And I did the meringue. I put it on a baking sheet. I put it in the oven. And when it came out, it was flatter than a sheet of paper. I don't yeah. understand how the meringue could shrink this way. Maybe people have a theory of what I did wrong. I'd love to know what I did wrong. Do you know what I did wrong? Because if you do, tell me. I did the meringue exactly as it was supposed to be done, or so I think, 
And when it came out, it was as flat as a sheet of paper. Uh, your uh, Pavlova is not your thing, Carlos. No. No. But hey, Pavlova is your favorite cake, mm-hmm. and I wanted to give you a wonderful birthday. So I do get points for for that, don't I? Yeah, It's the yeah, thought that well, counts. It, yeah, you tried. I tried. Yeah. But I can tell. I I did baking once. I made uh, what's that called in English? Napoleon. Okay. A Napoleon cake. Napoleon cake. So a Napoleon cake is that the one that has the cream? It's cream. And in, then the crackers. And yeah, kind of. A, yeah. Yeah. Something. You bake like a you bake like biscuits, and yeah. then you put a biscuit, and then a layer of cream, yeah. and then a biscuit, and a layer of cream, and a biscuit. Yeah. yeah. How did that one go? Uh, that went really bad because actually I had I had the recipe. I had one of my mother's cooking books, like something from the seventies, and I. Th- I thought I followed the recipe correctly, but I did something terribly wrong because what I did was in the in the in the recipe it said you should put layers, mm-hmm. and I miss missed the lines where it said or I missed actually a whole paragraph maybe because <laughs> I I missed the part where it said it should be. <laughs> bake before you put. Layer. Oh my god! So I put the, the dough in the in oh the no. in the, the raw dough in the raw dough. Then I whipped cream and I put cream on top and then I had <laughs> jam and then I had raw dough dough. <coughs> oh my god! And more cream and I think I, I think there was some jam also. <clears throat> and I put these layers on top of each other and then I put it in the oven. Oh my god! Oh and my. I baked everything. Oh my god! That was disgusting. Yeah, uh, that was. Yeah, I don't know what it came. It's like, it was nothing. Well, so yeah, I tried. <laughs> I was, I was really bad. I think the cream actually started to boil or something that destroyed the whole dough. Or, it was not the uh, <laughs> Napoleon's cake. I was so disappointed. Well, you are. Yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, but didn't so, you try again? No, I gave up. <laughs> My God! Because I thought this is. This is not not for me. This is from before I met you. I've never yeah. heard this story before. I was very before. young, and I I wanted to make a cake. It looks so nice on the picture. Yeah. Okay. So, so this. But is... but you know another thing, Carlos. I I I have, I don't know if you've seen it, but in my stash, oh, you probably haven't seen it because my stash is enormous. Mm-hmm. But there's a cooking book from my great grandmother with Gothic. Le- is it called Gothic letters? Yes. It's really hard to read and. And um, the measures are like in uh, like very old, you know. It's called what's it, the old one? Like uh, oh, the old Nor- the Nordic, old uh, oh, more Danish Norwegian uh, measurements, like pots of things and spoons and okay. A spoon is not so old, but like there's different measurements we don't use anymore. And you know that could be fun to try to make that on YouTube. Definitely. Find an old recipe in a pat in a in a written text you hardly can understand and try to make it. Oh yeah, let's let's uh, aim for that in twenty twenty then. That could be a podcast. Well, everybody you tell could us. See the book, and see how we mix it and see how we fail. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and uh, you want us to do that, you know, give us a comment, give us a shout out. And then we'll whip out Arne's great grandmother's cookbook and see what we can manage from there. Anyway, we've got the baking episode, and then there is an episode again the week after that I think will be enjoyable as well. We're cooking cabbage. Cabbage is in season in Norway mm. uh, at that time of the year, so it will be great to see what we can come up with then. So Arne, let's go back to the mitten now and yeah, uh, look a little bit because I, I'm seeing a little V coming up. Yeah, that's because that's where the thumb should be. The The gusset. The gusset, yeah. Gusset. So if you've been watching carefully what I'm doing now, or you can actually also put the, press that wheel so it slow the mm-hmm. the video down, then you probably would have seen how I increased in the mother stitch yeah. and in the grandmother stitch. Yeah, because now I mean I saw the gusset, but now the the mitten is turning around because you're knitting it on the round. Knitting on the so, round. So, but you know what I think we should do, Arna. Once we get back to the where the gusset is, uh, we should talk a little bit about about what you're doing there. Don't you think that's a good idea? I can. We can talk about yeah. it. But, but wait not, until I'm not slowing down. I'm no, 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 no. This one. Just knit as you are, and then once mm-hmm. we get back to where the gusset is, we can talk. You don't have to stop or anything, 
we just talk a little bit about it. But first and foremost, you mentioned grandmothers and mothers. So yeah. please, can you explain to our audience what you're talking about? So if you call the stitch that is on the needle, the daughter, okay. then the stitch under the daughter will be the mother. Yes. And the stitch under the mother is the grandmother. Ah. So and when we increase on one side, we go to the mother leg and pull out the stitch. And that's, that will be on the right side. And on the left side, we go to the grandmother and ah. then an increase in the grandmother stitch because you can't make two stitches in the in the mother if you do like go back you can probably yeah. do it but we don't do it so uh, and the reason why we do it on the on the mitten on the gusset is that we want to have a nice line a v a v going up because there's normally on on the traditional mitten design there is like lines in 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 one of the colors where the the gusset comes mm. and you don't want those lines to be like uh, how you call that spiky or no mm -hmm. is that the right word yeah yeah and that's why we do it so Line. we'll be coming up to the to the gusset again in a in a in a yeah. short while in a couple of needles so you'll be able to see it there um yeah yeah that's that's pretty good so basically if you have a row of stitches so one on top of the other on top of the if you look at the row just one row yeah. not a round but a row then when, where the stitches are on top of each other so the top the, the the one on the top is the daughter then the second one is the mother then you've got the grandmother the great-grandmother the great-great-grandmother you have the whole family tree going downwards down to like 400 before Christ, Christ or something. Well, oh, that, that's in your case, not in no. everybody's case. <laughs> so, okay, so here we are. Look, there is the... Here you can see the stripes. Yeah. And I'm pretty happy with my attention this time. Sometimes, you know, you are so stressed and you pull too much one of the colors, but I think I'm mm. pretty okay this time. Yeah. And the good thing by, with picking one color and throwing one color is that they normally pop in place mm. when you stretch them, if you haven't pulled too much. I see. The, yeah, that's a very good thing. Yeah. yeah, this gusset is nice. I like it. And I'm very excited to see what you're going to knit on the thumb. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm going, I'm going to I mean, I know, but I, I forgot because I haven't seen it for a while. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. No, you want to? I, I won't show you the whole time, because I'm going to put in the scrap yarn and then I finish. Oh yeah, but there will be a picture. There will be a picture. I'm going to make finish it, and we'll we'll take a picture, so you will see how it looks. But you can see it. It looks quite nice. I'm happy. Yeah, you'll see it on our Instagram, and you'll see it probably three times on our Instagram, because yeah. that's how we do Instagram nowadays. We post three of everything. Don't ask us why. We just do it. Some people get very annoyed but we don't care. Actually, visually, it looks nice when you've got three pictures after each other, like yeah. in a line, like a row of three cohesive photos. It looks like more planned. And then sometimes we get people that comment that they're trying to tell us that there's three photos after each other that look the same, uh, and, they, and they think maybe there's a mistake there, but nope, no, no mistake. So if you want to help us correcting the mistake, it's not a mistake. It's just three pictures after each other because that look the same because that's how we do Instagram nowadays. Yeah. There's no real explanation. It's just the way we, it's just our mood right now. We might change it in the future, but... You never know. One day we change it. But anyway, we'll probably post three pictures of the mittens on Instagram. And there will be, of course, the, the pattern that you can get on our website at arnacollis.com. And we'll probably post uh, a couple more photos on the blog as well. There's a blog that usually accompanies each post uh, that you can get on. Usually the blog posts will go up more or less at the same time as the, uh, as the YouTube tutorial and then it gets sent out as an update to all our subscribers of our um, mailing list. Yeah. So if you are a subscriber then you usually get your little update on Monday morning uh, or Monday afternoon depending on which part of the world you're in. And I want to tell you, another, evening, tell you another thing about the mittens that I'm making, because the, the women's mittens, they are 
in red and gray, and they have uh, the blue stripes on the on the cuff. But this, the one I'm making now is blue and gray with the red stripes on the cuff. That's the men's. The men's. So actually, this is three balls of yarn. Mm. But you can choose whatever colors you like. Uh, don't feel obliged to use our colors. Mm. But but if you make one one pair of mittens and the the color you use on the cuff can actually be the the background color for the next pair. Yeah. So you don't have to buy one ball of yarn and end up with a lot of leftover yarns. Yeah, that's you can true. Do yeah. Two pairs in the, the opposite way. So that's that's another thing you can think about. Yeah. Can I tell you can we talk about what I purchased on the tour we did we're doing in America or we did at the time you see this I've already done, done the per no the purchasing purchasing well you can tell them yeah tell I'm them so what you purchased I'm happy about this but it's supposed to be a christmas gift to yourself so you're not supposed to but I know it because I bought it I know. it's actually for you too well, yeah I know so it's okay christmas. what did you purchase snowshoes yep i'm so happy i'm over the moon because i've been looking at snowshoes in every time we've been in america and go to go to the thrift stores or antique shops i've seen these beautiful snowshoes i mm -hmm. think these i think it's the american or can I, canadian snowshoes they're so beautiful and we can't find those in norway uh, i've no, never seen them have uh, you never and and i I wanted to have snowshoes and we went to one of those sport shops in Norway and we looked at new snowshoes. And, and they were so expensive. They were so expensive and they're not nice. And, and then, but here's the best thing. So we go to this upstate New York place, like yeah. an antique store, and there's a pe pair of very rare looking, they're quite yeah. Our different. Our friends said they were very rare. They haven't seen that kind of snowshoes before because normally when you see snowshoes, they are like, big with those pikes going back like backwards two pikes going so they're quite big and really hard to get in a suitcase mm. and then i found two pairs of like more normals for us they look more like what we used to see but they're not so normal in america we heard and they're more round like um not totally round mm. but like oval oval yeah oval and they were really old and they were made somewhere in Vermont. But this is the amazing thing. So you, you see a pair on the wall that, of the shop that catches your eye yeah. and you buy them. Yeah. And they weren't crazy expensive. They no. were like 60, was the, it like 65 US dollars? They were compared to what you had to pay for new yeah. shoes. Exactly. If Nothing. you compare $65 to what a pair of snowshoes in Norway cost, which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars it's a bargain but this is the cool thing they had a matching pair they had a matching pair that and you didn't know of no and it's just so cool because there, there was also the like the name of the producer so it's like an old producer from vermont and but the leather was leather was very old so if it breaks i have to buy leather and, and replace it replace it but that's like easy Maybe a cobbler, a shoemaker would know how to. Yeah. But I can always do it. You go to one of those hobby shops and they probably have those pieces of leather and you just cut it out and you place it yeah. back. But it's very nice. And I'm looking so forward now to start walking around in the woods. Mm. Yeah, it'll can be you imagine great. Imagine for Christmas, you, you just take those snowshoes and you take a walk in the woods after dark. And it, that is so nice. Every time, like if there's a full moon, I really like to take a walk in, in the woods just to see the long shadows and the quietness. So our listeners will probably want to see a photo of them. And um, I'm <clears throat> at the moment, we'll have to disappoint you guys uh, because uh, that won't be possible. But we promise that at some point, maybe within the end of this year, we'll post a photo of the snowshoes both the a picture of the snowshoes uh, individually and also a picture of us uh, with our snowshoes on out in the snow because we, before we've been posting pictures from us when we go skiing just to 
it's fun to post pictures sometimes. Sometimes it's so nice in the woods. So this time it will be, I think we should do a snowshoe picture Definitely. to inspire all your people to go and get yourself a pair of snowshoes. Well, in order to have a pair of snowshoes, Arne, you will need to have some snow. Oh, you can use them on the beach. <laughs> okay. You can use them in the sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't Just to have the feeling. Not of, quite the same. I know. And if you're in Florida, you definitely do not need a pair of snowshoes. No. But anyway, we are looking forward to wearing them. And we are looking forward to showing you them. But now we've created some images on your head, in your, in your mind. So just picture us wearing our winter clothes, out with Freya, walking her, and um, wearing snowshoes. And you know, the good thing is like if we walk behind each other through the woods, and you don't step in my footprints, then we can make like a good road mm. for Freya, so she can run behind us. Well, not run, maybe, but we won't go that quick. Okay, Arne, let's talk okay. about the real breakout star of our video. That's Freya. Yeah. So, as we were saying, it's four years since we um, launched YouTube. <coughs> so, next year we'll have a big anniversary. In December 2021, it will be five-year anniversary. But yeah, we've realized that the breakout star of our YouTube channel is not Arne or me. It's Freya. Yeah. Freya is the most popular uh, person in our YouTube channel. And whenever we travel, what do you guys think is the first question or the most, uh, you know, like the most asked question when we travel? What do you think it is? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody wants to know where Freya, where Freya is, is and who takes care of her. Yeah. And sometimes we're like, oh, we forgot, what, we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> we're joking, <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> but yeah, that's the question, everybody. That's actually the question that we answer whenever we're on tour, whenever we enter a, a class to, to do some teaching, whenever we hold a lecture, there's always at least one person who wants to know who takes care of Freya. Yeah. I think we may have answered it before, but let's do it again, okay? So we keep Freya in the family. Uh, so the caretaker of Freya or caregiver of Freya while we are on tour is our sister-in-law's mother and she takes care of Freya and so Freya is with the family uh, and our sister-in-law's mother lives um, very near the farm where Arne grew up, where Arne's brother still lives. So she's, she's okay. Yeah, she's more than okay. She's being spoiled. She has her best friend, the cat. Uh, and they're becoming friends. Well, frenemies. Frenemies. And she likes running and chasing the cat up on a, the cat jumps up on the on the windowsill or on the sofa, and Freya jumps up uh, and tries to, to um, she doesn't she's not biting him, but she tries to to cr grab him with her hand or something. Yeah, I don't know actually what she's trying to. They seem to have this this game that they play. I, I think it's actually a playing game. The cat is not you know one hundred percent. Uh, liking her, but they do get along, yeah, you know, in a, in a, in a dog and to, cat kind of way. Yeah, they need to understand the different signs because, you know, if a cat wave his tail, wag, wag bag, his tail. then he is not in a, in a good mood. Mm -hmm. So it's like the opposite of a dog. So it takes time, but yeah. And then Freya, works. Freya gets to go to soccer games and she's hanging out with the family, our sister-in-law got herself a dog too. It's called uh, Billy. Mm -hmm. It's a female and it is a, it's a retriever uh, of some sort. I don't remember the, I don't remember the breed, but it's I very cute. I remember, there's so many different and it's hard to remember the different names. Yeah. But it's cute, that's the most important thing. And then people ask us if Freya will be upset when we come home and um, I don't think so. I mean, dogs are not like cats. They're very different. And one of the things that Freya does not have is a sense of time. She doesn't know that we've been away for so long. I think she understands that we've been away. But maybe and not. she understands that because we've been away, she's been living with someone else. But she doesn't understand that we've been away for so long. I think she thinks we're just grabbing groceries at the supermarket. And then when we come back, she'll be... She'll be really happy to see us, and then we'll take her home. And of course, she will be a little 
a little sad a day or two, but she's not yeah. upset at us. But sometimes I really don't know if, if she's sad or if she's just tired, because sometimes, like, if you you share a house with a cat, it can be very lo- hectic. No, but I think she'll so be maybe sad. maybe she's just relaxing after all the fun. No, I think she's sad. She'll be, like, sad for a day because she's left the routine of the other house. But after a day, she'll be back into her routine in our house and she'll be happy. I mean, I want to stress that we would have never gotten Freya if we knew that we would travel as much as we're doing. But it's not our goal to continue traveling this much. So I think that at some point, hopefully sooner than later, we will actually uh, stop traveling for work Mm. if we can. I thought we should just do YouTube and meet people on YouTube. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we didn't have to go travel that much. But then again, sometimes you have to travel. Yeah. yeah. But so. Freya is a sweetheart. Um, and she's very, she's very um, attached to both our Arne and me, plus her other family that cares for her. Uh, so, uh, and then, of course, we have a housekeeper that sometimes, she comes in once a week and helps us with all our, our house stuff. And she... Uh, she also takes care of Freya from time to time when, uh, when we go on like a short trip, like maybe a day trip. We don't want Freya to be alone at home. She gets separation anxiety, so we always make sure that she's, somebody's there with her. Uh, so our housekeeper will come and sit with her or take her to her home or something. Well, that, that, uh, that gusset is looking very good, Arne. Yes. So I I'm think very, it's, a, it's a very good way to do it. And... We also experienced that like when, if we do knitting things in Norway, we no, normally don't do knitting workshops. We do knitting, knit and knitting meetings. Mm. But this is actually maybe the only thing or one of the few things we can teach Norwegian knitters. Because I don't know, maybe, maybe the way we increase on the gusset is not the traditional way. Maybe this is just something we came up with. or maybe But this is the traditional way of making, of making it. Knitting. But the increasing is maybe, maybe something I learned from my grandmother. I don't know. Anyway, it will be a beautiful gusset yeah. for sure. It, it's the, I think it's the best way to do increasing. On the, yeah. on the gusset. I'm excited to, to see the continuation of this, uh, yeah. of this design. I think maybe you could talk a little bit more about what you're planning to do. Yeah, I can do. I think I have to rest my hand, just shake my hands a little bit. And yeah. So are you planning to actually back. add the contrast thread I will today? I add the contrast and then I think we're good when I, I put the contrast in. And my tension looks okay, I think. I think it looks great. Uh, you're doing a good job, Arne. And, uh, a little bit of blocking will, or mm. steaming will be good. And then maybe at some point we will actually do a uh, YouTube tutorial, if we haven't already. I can't remember. Oh, what are you doing now? I'm fixing some stitches. Okay. <laughs> because I pulled it too much. Oh, that happens. Yeah. It happens. So what do you think about Christmas carols? Do you have any vicious... Or any... Any what? Any... What do you wish Oh, wishes. For, oh, I th- what do you want... What do you want to do for oh, Christmas? I don't know. Um, I guess so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This year has been quite hectic, so... Um, Just relax. I'm looking forward to relaxing and spending time with our family. I think that that is something I really want to do. Yeah. And some good friends, of course. We have some great friends that we always see in the holidays, uh, whether we'll be spending Christmas with them or your family. I don't think we've decided that yet, or it hasn't been decided. We're still working on figuring out where we'll go for Christmas. But this year, we're not going to be alone, that's for sure. Um, Yeah, and and then, of course, because our tour will be so long, I'm Mm -hmm. also looking forward to the the fact that we won't be traveling until we go to Australia next year. We're going to Australia. When is that? Uh, March, March 27th. 27 on the knitting cruise. Yeah, March 27th is our departure, 27th of March of 2020. And it's an 11 day tr- cruise. It leaves um, Sydney Harbour and goes all the way to Auckland, New Zealand, and then goes back to 
to Sydney. And actually, it just doesn't go to Auckland. It starts down in the South Island and then it goes around uh, both the South Island and the North Island before it goes back to, and then to like, Sydney from Auckland. We're, we're crossing like the real ocean. I guess so. Like how many, we're like, is it three days out in the open no, ocean? Th- or? There's a total of five days out five at sea. Days. And during those five days, we'll be teaching a number of different classes. Yeah. And then, uh, and then there, there is the, um, the six days that we are around New Zealand, starting in the South Island and finishing up in Auckland. And I'm, I'm going to need to have those patches behind my ears. I had to have those wrists. Arm wrist, what do you call that? Arm band. Oh, the wrist, uh, wrist. the 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 um, the seasick, uh, seasick wrist, wrist bands. Band, and I need pills. I'm gonna have everything because mm. I'm not very strong when it comes to being on the ocean. Yeah, you're better. You don't react on anything. No, I'm okay. I love the sea. So, so I spoke with, uh, or I was emailing with the organizer, uh, Joe. Joe's the organizer of this cruise, and she said that. Um, it's pretty, it's not sold out yet, but it's very close to sold out. There's a couple of spaces left. So if every, anybody is interested in an Australia cruise or a cruise from Australia to New Zealand last minute, there are some openings. So you better get in contact with Joe and, um, and book. And you can do so through our website. Just go to our blog and uh, check out this week's blog post, which will be a blog post about the, the podcast, the mitten, um, and there's information there for you to go and click and, and, and sign up. And remember, that is if you watch this video in the year to 2019. Oh yeah, in December 2019. In December 2019, if you watch this video in December... 2023. 2023. It's too late. It's too late. We've been on the cruise and I'm sure we loved it. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, but but now we're going to go home and we're going to spend time and we're going to enjoy our, you know, company of our family. Freya is going to be with us for a long, long time. And we're not going to be traveling anywhere uh, until New Zealand and Australia. So it's kind of crazy to, to start talking about a new trip uh, when, when all we need, to, all we want to do now <laughs> is relax at home. So let's just relax at home and enjoy good food, good company, long walks in the yeah. snow. And then we may have to tweak uh, our new fabrics collection that we're working on. Yeah. That's something I I really have, hadn't haven't thought about. But well, we've already actually, designed it, and then we'll see what happens. Actually, that's maybe something we have to do before Christmas. Yeah, we'll we see. No, but then again, we can say no. We think it looks great at the moment, so we just keep it as it is. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Is that a good idea? Yeah, I guess you think so. That work? Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. No. But yeah, a lot of people are asking us about our fabric collection and where they can get it, um, especially the U.S. and Canada. And to be honest, we don't know at the moment. It is not going uh, as we would have wanted it to. And the reason is because there is a little issue between <clears throat> European widths and American widths. So the Americans, they want to do their quilting and they want to cut fat quarters. And because of that, the width of fabrics is in meters, it's one meter and ten but that's not enough for sewing clothing. You need a little bit more width, otherwise you waste a lot of fabric. So the European uh, width of the fabric is one meter and 40 centimeters. It means that there's a dispute between American distributors and our European uh, manufacturer because of those 30 centimeters, which are actually free of charge if, you, uh, if you're in America. But uh, yeah, it's not going very Someone well. Someone said it was the problem of the, the the shelves in the shops. I don't know. They could, Is that true? I don't know. It's ridiculous. They could be stored in, 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 in another place than in shelves. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we're trying to do pre-cuts now, and we'll see if the pre-cuts will be more easy to get into the, the United States and Canada. But So for the time being, you have to get it from the UK. I'm very sorry. But you already met people who bought it from the U- UK and made patchwork bags. Yeah, and, yeah. Stuff, so. and that's no problem. So it's available. Yeah, but it's a, it's a very interesting situation. We have a huge demand in the U.S. for the fabrics, and 
still there's no distributor who wants to distribute it. So that's actually a very bizarre situation where people would buy it if they could get it, but the distributors don't see it that way. But hopefully it will, yeah, hopefully it will solve its work itself out at some point i'm very sorry i mean but this is the problem nowadays with all this globalization you know we, our, our youtube channel is across all borders it's for it's available all over the world and people are enjoying our episodes whether they are in america whether they are in I mean, in Europe, whether they are in Asia, Africa, loads of people. South America has loads of, we have viewers from there too. And then you have these issues that then the products that we design are not available uh, in a key country or in key countries like Canada, USA, Mexico, uh, because uh, of the distributor of the distributors and the issues with the width of the fabric. It's a little bit crazy that these things should be an issue in 2019 uh, but that's the way it is and and uh, i'm sure that there will be a solution at some point anyway what are we doing now arne we're doing the gusset i'm still working on it still working on that gusset soon i will put in the scrap yarn and then you will see how that works and that would be pretty much the same as the um, easiest sock in the world afterthought yeah. heel the afterthought heel which we've but done i think the like the, to use that scrap yarn is really really clever mm. I don't because like in the old days when you made mittens you bind off the stitches for the thumb and then people were making stitches again on the next round mm -hmm. but that gets thicker so it's it's really really good to use the scrap yarn it, it is absolutely it so yeah. much easier it does yeah and then you just open it and then you cast yeah, on or not op cast on you you pick up the stitches you open the hole and then you just do the beautiful thumb. Yeah. And I know a lot, we've seen a lot of people who, when they make, uh, make stitches, it's not easy because it depends on how you cast, cast on the needle, the yarn. So mm. it's at least easy, but it's, uh, it's not so nice in a way. Mm. Yeah. It gets more clumpy. It does, yeah. So yeah, Arne, what are you looking forward to uh, this Christmas? This I Christmas or before Christmas, I have a plan because I will make more of the small birds that we need with the embroidery yarn. Oh yeah. Because this year I have managed to make two birds and that's not much in a year, but we had so much other things to do. But I think maybe I could manage to knit two more to the days before Christmas and take time to put on the sequence and the feathers and stuff because I have a plan. Actually, we had two plans because I, we worked a lot on the white birds from our knitted bird books, the ones with the hats and the scarves, mm -hmm. because the plan was to have a Christmas tree with only white birds. But then I changed my mind. Mm. Because it, we had so much uh, leftover embroidery yarn from the embroidery collection we did with uh, Anchor. Because we oh, get yeah. a lot of yarn. Mm. And, That's true, yeah. And, you know, we made, made swatches, we made the embroideries, and then you end up with leftover. So I started to knit birds from, from the leftover yarn from the embroidery. Yep. And when you do those birds, you can actually use any color because, especially the way we do it, because we end up putting on sequences or sequence. Sequence, not sequence. sequences. Sequences is that the is radio. That is a very word. strange word. Sequence and sequences are two different things. Sequences, I think, are the things you listen on the radio, like different sequences. Sequences, sequences are the little beads. So what do you palliates. say if you have one sequence? Well, one sequence is a sequence. And many sequence. It's many sequence. <laughs> so the word doesn't change. I don't think so. No? No. Anyway. And we have a lot of that sequence lying around. Yeah. So it's a nice way to clean up. And can I come up with, can I come up, can I give you a suggestion, Arna? Yeah. The beak that you do, the crochet beak. I don't really, I don't know, I think it's, 
It's not, it's not that it's complicated, but you know, uh, I discovered. You think it's complicated? No, it's not that. But you I discovered, like I discovered a better and easier way to do the beat. Yeah, well, that's what we do on the small ones. And that's what I uh, wanted to tell our listeners. So okay. if you're doing the birds and you don't want to do the crochet beak, you know what you do? You, you do, you put a clove in it. You go to the supermarket. You buy clove. The little but isn't that cloves. Haven't, haven't we done a video on that? We have, yeah. And then you go home, and then you get out some glue, and then you put some glue between two stitches in the oh. in the face of the bird, and you pop in a little That's piece one of, of clove. Another one of your great ideas, Carlos. And it smells really, really good, yeah. especially if you're doing the little embroidery birds for Christmas. And yeah, it smells like Christmas. And what I find really cool is that when you open one of those packages with cloves, there's mm -hmm. so many different variations. Yeah. You can have longer beaks, shorter... Cloves. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's perfect. Cloves yeah. are the best beaks for the birds. Wow, look at that gusset. It's yeah. beautiful. Oh, oh. Thank you. No, but it's nice. And the shape and is exactly... I think my tension for straps is quite good on this one. I, I think I managed to do it nicely this time because you see that one color is not on top of the other. Mm. Yeah, no, it's very pretty. I think you're doing an excellent job. So yeah, let's go back to this whole four years of YouTube-ing. Mm -hmm. It's been fun, Arne. I think we are getting better and better at this as well because we're enjoying it more and more. Do you agree? Yeah, I hope so. I think I so. I hope we're getting better. I think that, you know, if you look at the beginning of the, mm -hmm. you know, the beginning of the recordings and you compare them to what we're doing now, we prepared more in the past. We were more, um, I mean, it was more constructed and now I think we, we, you know, we got our confidence and we were more relaxed in front of the camera. It works really well. And yeah, four years ago, we decided that you would be the master crafter, uh, extraordinaire, and I would be kind of taking more of a journalist role so that I help you bring the episodes forward by kind of interviewing you and then you show. Because you show, you teach, you are a very good teacher, you teach in a, in a very good no, way. No, I'm not so sure because, like, a lot of people say that, like, when I do that, like, the Norwegian Pearl. Yeah, and that's I, true. I, I'm way too quick, and now when we've done classes around in, in America, yeah. uh, people say that it's so much easier to understand when you do it. So, okay. So I don't know why you, you should do the pearl on YouTube. Okay. We should do a new video where you are pearling. Let's, yeah, that, that's a good idea. And you know why? Idea. Because you pearl slower. Okay. Let's do the Norwegian Pearl Revisited where I show how I do yeah, it. This because you're right about that. Watch Carlos Pearl <clears throat> and learn. You're right about that. I mean, when we've been teaching in the USA, uh, people are actually surprised that I actually teach. They say, oh, we thought that Arne was the only one. And, and then I said, no, but we have a role <laughs> in the YouTube channel where you are the one that instructs and I'm the one that brings because, the episode forward. And that's because I do it quicker. But then... Being quick is necessarily not a good idea. Well, anyway, the, the, the thing was that uh, a couple of times already while we, while we were in the USA, people were saying like, oh, wow, I didn't understand Arne, but I do understand when you do it. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do a Norwegian Pearl Revisited where I'm going to show. It because I also checked, like, I checked on YouTube for Norwegian Pearls, and there's a lot of strange Norwegian Pearls out there. They're not Norwegian. You mean like videos? Yeah. It's, uh, you can search, make it, do a search for Norwegian pearl and you can see people are making the strangest pearl in the world. Well, but I would hope, uh, I mean, in all, uh, I'm going to say this in a very humble way because, you know, we don't take anything for granted, but we would hope that people that are aspiring to learn the Norwegian pearl would come and do it uh, from somebody who is Norwegian. Yeah, because like I've, you. Seen, I've seen pearls like where they're, Yarns are wrapped around the pinky and the index finger, and the fingers are up in the air. air. But are they Norwegians no. who are teaching the Norwegian no. pearls? No. Oh, okay. But the Norwegian pearl, no one, there's, there's not a single Norwegian who pearl that way. In Norway, there are normal, normally people pearl like we do, or they put the yarn in front of the needle, but not with the finger up in the air. Yeah, but I mean, okay, yeah, I, I see what you mean. But yeah, hopefully people so will people will come and look pearl. at the at the Norwegian pearl done by a, a, a you know like Norwegians, 
And then if they want to learn the German pearl, they should go to a German expert who is German, right? And if they want to learn the, I don't know, the British pearl, then they should look at uh, somebody from Britain that does it, in my opinion. But, but yeah. now the way we pearl has, is like called Norwegian pearl all over the world. But we know that like a lot of people in Denmark and Finland and Iceland and Sweden, they also pearl the same way. And also in Russia. Yeah, we but you know what amused me? We are in Russia and Poland. Mm. They also said that that's the way they pearl. Mm. So it's actually, I think it's a Baltic, <laughs> Baltic pearl. Maybe we I should call know. it the Baltic pearl. Baltic pearl. And then let because anybody all, from the Baltic region teach it. Yeah, but now it's called Norwegian pearl. And it's I very, think it's probably because of us, huh? Uh, no, I think no? it was called that before. It was? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. But things are changing because people people don't know how to hold the yarn and hold the tension the right way for a Norwegian pearl because this, this the finger shouldn't be way up in the air and the yarn, the finger is not moving all over the place you're not pointing at the star you should hold the finger behind your work yeah anyway, anyway. that's the Norwegian pearl yeah. uh, thing uh, what is good, though, is that because we've been showing the Norwegian Pearl um, and it's been so popular with our viewers, uh, it has spread. And I think that's very positive because you, you, we are inspiring more people to do knitting. Yeah, and I think, I think that's I a think good uh, thing. I think a lot of people, when they get into the way we knit and pearl and even the way we do collar work, it, it's, it's kind of logic when you understand it. And we, when we try to make knitting more simple. Yeah, simplify it. There shouldn't be a lot of rules because there isn't. As long as if the tension is fine, you can put the yarn on your needle anyway. Mm -hmm. Like no one should tell you how the yarn should come. Yeah, because there's on. many ways to do everything. There's many ways to do anything. And if the tension is fine, it's fine. Mm. So that's that's the only rule yeah so Arne um, I you know as I said I was looking forward to to staying home for a while you're looking forward to making birds how about food is I'm there anything particular you want me to cook for Christmas this no, year no I'm very traditional I yeah but that's what I mean but you know in Norway we have different yeah. different Christmas food depending on where you come from I want right. the, well, the food we have every year. Like I want uh, on the, the, the night the before Christmas. I want Do you want the lutefisk on December 23rd? I mean, yeah, lutefisk. And then I want the uh, pork. What do you call that? Ribs? Yeah, the ribs on December 24th. Yeah. And then you want the pinochet, the then lamb. Pinochet. The, dried, uh, the dried lamb uh, ribs. Yeah. The steamed lamb ribs on... The 25th or the 26th. Yeah. And then one not so traditional, I want pasta with shrimps. But that you want every day? Or? Every <laughs> Once, one day during Christmas. And then we have this other, this uh, fish from the area where we live called rökfisk. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's, but sometimes we, we go to, to our family and we have rökfisk before Christmas because that's also... I, I guess that's kind of a tradition now. It is. It's a good tradition. So we bring Iraq fisk from the area where we live, and then we have dinner with family. That is very nice. And I look forward to skiing a lot this yeah, and we need it. winter. Yeah, after <laughs> no, my after gosh. traveling for 78 days <laughs> and know, eating restaurant food, restaurant food for 78 days, we need a cleanse. And hotel breakfast. Okay, so hotel breakfast. Yeah. I love hotel breakfasts, but not right now. No. I think I have hotel breakfast coming out of my ears. You know those scrambled eggs? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, my God. We have had so much scrambled And bacon eggs. and sausage. Yeah. I mean, how many days can you have uh, eggs and bacons and sausage before that becomes old? old so we were, visiting, <laughs> we were visiting some very good friends uh, in the U.S. After, after touring for a very long time, and... And uh, they thought that we wanted the whole thing, right? The full American breakfast with eggs and bacon and all of that. And all we actually, all I wanted was a bowl of or, um, organic Greek yogurt, 
some granola and some berries. That's all I wanted. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, all you want for breakfast? Well, no, but at the That's point, almost... once we've been having all the, all the crazy hotel food, that's what I crave. I crave a bowl of yogurt with granola and berries. But you know, Arne, I always say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah. And it is. And you need a good breakfast. Um, in, at home, we'll have all our porridges that we make. Uh, then we go abroad or travel and then we have all that, those hotel breakfasts. And after that, I want some simple food, like a bowl of yogurt with some granola and some berries. Yeah. And that's what I'm craving right now. A bowl of bowl Greek, of yogurt, Greek with yogurt with granola and berries. Mm. Mm. But it's, it's kind of hard to just have restaurant food and it is. hotel breakfast. It is. It's a challenge. Time. It's a challenge. And it's also a challenge to pack for a trip like that. Yeah, because we've been like all over. We've been in winter and summer and autumn and spring. We have like every season. So... That is, that is difficult, and you need to, you need to have everything. Yeah. Okay, so now let's pretend mm -hmm. we're back home, mm -hmm. uh, we've done the four Advents, mm -hmm. so that's done, and we're celebrating Christmas, mm -hmm. we're with family and friends, then we go skiing mm -hmm. for a while, right, mm -hmm. and have a great time doing that, and then we play in the snow, and then we work in some design projects. We this don't play in the snow, do we? With Freya? Oh, yeah. Of course we do. <laughs> Sorry. If it's, not like... too, if it's not too cold. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Um, and, then, and then we keep doing that and maybe some design work. That's going to be our life in half of December, all of January, and all of February. Yeah. But then in March, uh, we'll be going on the Coastal Express in Norway again on our highly successful uh, midnight Sun. Sorry, no. Nordic lights. Nordic lights. The Aurora Borealis cruise. Knitting under the Nordic Northern Lights. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Now, if you're coming on, on our Northern Lights cruise in March, remember to pray for cold weather. The colder it gets, the higher the probability that we'll see the Aurora Borealis. Yeah. It needs to get cold. Why does it need to get cold? Because Usually when it gets really cold, it pushes away all the clouds and the bad weather. And then that's when you get the clear blue sky and the big yellow sun. And when you get that cold weather with a clear blue sky and a big yellow snow or yellow sun, when it gets dark, the aurora comes out because you need cold. a clear sky. Cold weather is not a guarantee for it, but it actually helps a lot. So pray for that. And I'm... We, sorry, and we are looking forward to seeing you. I mean, I speak for myself. I'm looking forward to seeing you, and I'm sure you do too, don't you, Arne? I'm looking forward to it. So we're looking forward to meeting you. Uh, the Aurora Cruise is always the one that sells out immediately. Uh, I'm placing the scrap yeah, yarn. There's a, the, there's a scrap yarn. So and what, just tell the story, Carlo, and I'm placing the scrap yarn. Sure, yeah. So yeah, the Aurora Cruise is uh, the one that sells the quickest, or the fastest, but we're going to do a September cruise, and it's out now. Uh, the September 2020 cruise is going to be so much fun because we're doing the classic uh, return route. We're, we're gonna going to go. Up we're down. traveling northbound. We're crossing the Arctic Circle. We get to the North Cape. There is an uh, there is an excursion included in that, and then we're going to Shirkenes, and then we tour Shirkenes, and then we go back past the North Cape and southbound and finish up in Bergen. Eleven nights. Um, I don't know what kind of a knit-along we're going to be designing for that cruise, but it's going to be a fantastic knit-along. I can guarantee that. Don't you agree, Arne? I agree. We need to come up with a knit-along for 11 days because we don't actually teach classes on our cruises. It's knit-alongs and they're mystery and they're secret and they are fun and everybody participates and has a great time. So that's what you have to look forward to next year. Yeah. So make sure to go into the uh, into our website and under journeys and find out more there. And, and remember, again, we don't teach, but we are always around. So if people need help, we will help. And remember also to get the pattern for this mitten if you want it. It's on our website at arnacarlos.com uh, slash shop. You can also select shop from the menu and you can knit this beautiful pair of mittens. We're not calling them Christmas mittens, but they could be a Christmas gift. They could also be a Valentine gift, right? 
And now you have done the contrast so, yarn. So I just make a little bit more knitting, but then I will stop because now I need to take the knitting to another place and relax. And finish it and in, finish peace and quiet. in peace and quiet. And if you make these mittens and you're coming to our cruise, you should bring them because you might need them when you go way up north to the Arctic Circle. Then you might need a pair of mittens. Yeah, bring them. Your Valentine mittens. Or they can be your Nordic Lights mittens. Yeah. You can knit them in green and yellow. Then there are Nordic Lights. Yeah. But yeah, this is great. I see that you uh, put the contrast and then you knit it above. Yeah. And now you are correcting a couple of more stitches. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I mean, all in all, this is a successful... Uh, a successful project. This mm -hmm. these mittens are going to be gorgeous. And what do you have to say now, Carlos? So. Oh, gee, yeah. yeah. No, I think we'll let we'll 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 do that later. Okay. So now I think hopefully you understand more about uh, working the thumb, uh, and we hope you have enjoyed this podcast. Uh, Remember to give us a big thumbs up like. if you enjoyed it. Like a really big thumbs up. <laughs> uh, okay, Arne. And uh, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not doing it. Uh, we post videos every single week. And remember that the best way to stay in touch with us to find out about our tour schedule is by becoming a subscriber to our mailing list, which you will also find at arnacarlos.com. Uh, there's an opt-in box where you can pop in your email address and you will be notified every time something exciting happens here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we've uh, enjoyed this podcast. We look forward to cooking for you next week on 2nd of Advent. And it's going to be a very special episode, I promise you that. Okay, so uh, until next week, uh, happy uh, planning or whatever you're doing for Christmas. Uh, happy, yeah, I suppose happy you could something. say. Happy something. Happy something. I hope your plans are going well. And remember, stress down. So Relax. see you around. See you. Bye. Bye.